Hi, this is Emerald and welcome to the Diamond Net and today I'm going to be talking to you about 10 facets of practicing intimacy in relationships. Alright, so this video is going to outline 10 different ways to practice intimacy in relationships. Now, this can be in platonic relationships or romantic relationships. Um, basically, the idea behind this is that intimacy is basically meaning that you see the other person and accept them exactly as they are, and then you get the same back in return. So it's very much a two-way street with practicing intimacy. Now, with regard to this practice, you want to make sure that you choose someone to practice with that um, you can trust, that you know is going to have your best interest at heart. And, you know, because you don't want to be opening yourself up to somebody who maybe is not going to respect your boundaries or is going to take advantage in some way. And so that's something to keep in mind as you're using these practices. It's not going to be something that you're going to want to open up to everyone. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get into the list. So the first thing, and definitely start out with this one because this one really trips a lot of people up, is to notice your projections onto the other person and to set them aside. So basically, you want to think about human beings, like the way that we take things in and understand the world is we have to create a projection based on our past experiences, based on our previous knowledge. Otherwise, everything, we would be experiencing every, more, any, every moment like a newborn baby. We wouldn't really know what was going on. So in a sense, if I'm looking at a window right now, I have to project the idea of window onto it just to realize that that's what that is. And this is how the intellect works. So projection is very much baked into our experience experience. But when it comes to psychological projection onto other people, this can really get in the way of our ability to actually experience that person. And because intimacy has so much to do with actually seeing the person as they are, this is a huge barrier to intimacy. So I want to tell a story that I've told several other times in other videos on my channel. So I apologize if this is repeat information for some of you guys. But basically I realized how much of a problem this is for people. Basically seeing their projections of the person but never seeing the person themselves. And that actually stopping them from actually having a connection, an intimate experience. And basically being isolated because they never see anything past their projections onto things. So... I was hanging out with these guys and they had this little puggle, which is like a half beagle, half pug. It was a really adorable dog. And, you know, they would always, they would do like the cute animal thing where they would like kind of like make up the puggle's voice and have her say this and that. And like basically they were, they were just really loved this dog. And basically at the time, I had had my ego transcendence experience when I was around them. And I started to notice that their behavior around the dog it was really making me sad and I really wasn't sure why it was making me sad and it eventually sort of crystallized as a realization that they're not actually interacting with the dog they're interacting with their idea of the dog they don't actually see the dog's real personality they don't actually see how reality is essentially they have such a blinder on such a projection that they never actually experience the reality of the dog it's like the dog lives like almost like in this other other world that they don't even have access to and I got really sad about this and I realized that this is like why human beings have such a difficult time connecting because they see their projection and they don't see the person themselves so this one if you practice nothing else on this list practice this one really see the person as they are and not as you need them to be not as you think they are but really try to notice them for exactly how they are all right, the second thing, once you've noticed your projections and set them aside, is to also notice your own hidden agendas in the relationship. Like, in this, you should be very open-handed in terms of, like, what you're coming into the experience for. The, basically, what you should want from the experience is just to have an intimate connection. But sometimes other thoughts and ideas and desires come in on top of this, and you find that this gets in the way of the connection. All right, so let's take an example of two people. Um, so let's say one partner, like let's say I'm the partner and I like the other person and I want to date the other person who I'm trying to have this intimate connection with, but they don't necessarily have that in return. 
And so I'm here and I'm like, you know, trying to have a connection, but then in the back of my head, I have this thought like, oh, if I have a deep enough connection that this will lead into a relationship or it might, but it's that agenda, that desire actually gets in the way of having that intimate connection itself. And so you want to be very, very aware when you're like trying to create this sense of intimacy. Is it the intimacy that you want or is it almost like you're using intimacy as a means to an end to get to something else, whatever that may be. So you want to be hyper aware of that and you want to set that aside. So basically the last two with the getting, uh, setting your projections aside and setting aside your agendas, you know, it requires a certain degree of self-knowledge and to be able to kind of move yourself out of the way. All right, so the next one is actually a little bit paradoxical. You know, with the next one, you want to make sure that you're very in touch with what your boundaries are and that you communicate them clearly. And then also to have the other person clearly communicate their boundaries to you. So it's paradoxical in that it's like, well, if you're opening up to someone, shouldn't you be taking down your personal boundaries? And the answer is no. Everybody has their boundaries. Everybody has their lines that they don't want to cross. And essentially, you should always be respecting the other person's boundaries and they should always be respecting yours. So in order for the intimacy and connection to happen, it has to be a situation where nobody's toes are getting stepped on. Nobody should be having to uh, sacrifice their boundaries in order to make that connection happen. So you just want to be really, really clear with what the boundaries are. All right, so number four is to intend to give and to take love. So essentially, you want to practice giving love to the other person and then also receiving love. And so one thing that's important to know is to know how the person can actually receive love. So um, many of you might be familiar with the book on the five love languages. So those are words of affirmation, physical touch, uh, quality time, gifts, and acts of service. So with those five love languages, these are basically people will tend to have an orientation toward one or two of these as opposed to the other ones. And so if a person, let's say, is um, their love language is words of affirmation, like they like receiving compliments and they feel loved that way, but another person's love language is, you know, giving gifts. And let's say giving gifts is, it doesn't really resonate with that person who is more into words of affirmation. And the person is always trying to give them gifts. It's like they're not really receiving love in the way that they can receive it. And so it's important to get to know yourself and to sort of open up dialogue dialogue with your um, with the person that you're trying to be intimate with as to how they can receive love and that way you can give love in the way they can receive it and vice versa. All right, the fifth facet of intimate connection is to be receptive. And so when I say be receptive, what it means is to be very open-handed as I've been mentioning about what what the situation is. So essentially, if you have some outcome in mind, so like if you're using the intimacy as a means to an end, like in the example that I gave before, that's not being receptive because you're vying for a certain outcome in the future. Essentially, you should trust the process and be very open-handed with how the flow of intimacy happens between you and the other person. So you shouldn't be like, oh, I'm going to be, you know, intimate in this way with them now and this is going to lead into this and this and this. Like, you shouldn't have any ideas about where the situation's going. Just be very in the moment, in the flow with them and respond to things as they come up. So in a sense, if you think about receptivity, you want to think about almost like emptying the cup, allowing for the space for things to change and for things to move in a particular direction. And if you get attached to a certain outcome, what happens is that that restricts that flow from happening. So essentially you want to let whatever happens to happen and to just sort of flow downstream with that other person. All right, so the sixth facet of intimate connection would be to hold space for one another. And so this idea of holding space, it should be done in an unconditional way. So if a person is not feeling very good that day, essentially when you speak with them, when you interact with them, you hold space for them to be exactly as they are. And again, it should be a two-way street as well. Like if you're not feeling well or if you're, you know, emotionally a certain way, they should hold the space for you, essentially allowing you to be however you are and you're allowing for them to be however they are, regardless of whether 
whether or not it conforms to any agenda either of you have. All right, number seven, and this one is really, really important, is to practice complete and total honesty and vulnerability in communication. So, uh, for example, like if I am not feeling well or I'm not feeling like things are going well in the relationship, you know, there might be a tendency to want to like gloss over that so things are more harmonious. But the idea is to really allow that to come out in the most respectful way possible. So let's say that there's some kind of conflict. It's like, hey, when this happened, this is how I felt and this is how I saw this situation. And just to be very, very thorough and very vulnerable with the level of honesty and to really, you know, really sort of almost try to meet your edge in terms of you know what you're able to express and what you're able to convey to them. So let's say that I notice that I'm projecting something onto the other person and that it's been kind of getting in the way of things. Then I would to the other person say, hey, you know, I have been thinking this and this and this way about this and it's just now come to my realization and I'm making this mean this and that mean that. And in a sense that can even lead you deeper with that person because that person can then respond to that. It's about sharing what's true 100% for you emotionally and psychologically at that moment. So you're just telling them exactly how it is for you and again you're being very open-handed, very agendaless, and you're trying to present yourself to them like I said in a very um, in a very receptive kind of way where you trust them to be able to respond in a way that you know, doesn't go over your boundaries as well. All right, so the eighth facet of intimate connection is to always have the other person's best interest at heart, even if it goes against your own agenda. And that's true even if it takes you out of the picture. Now, this doesn't always mean something so extreme as like having to cut out of their life. That probably won't happen very often. But, you know, it's again a matter of being aware of what your personal agendas are. And if what's best for them gets in the way of your personal agendas, then being able to set those agendas to the side, allowing people to grow in whichever way it is best for them to grow, even if it isn't what you want or even if it conflicts with your own interests. All right, so number nine is to practice devotion and unconditional love. So what devotion and unconditional love means is that you are going to essentially not abandon that person, even if things get a little bit difficult. Now, like I had said, you know, if the person is not respecting you, if they're going over your boundaries, then you also have to practice unconditional love for yourself, and you have to make sure that you are loving yourself in the process. All right, so the tenth facet of creating a sense of intimacy in the relationship, and the last one I'll go over in this video, but there's plenty, plenty, plenty of others, as well is to recognize the other person as an extension of yourself. So on one level, on the very human level, we can notice that other people are similar to us. They have similar emotions, they have similar life experiences, they have basically just by virtue of us being the same species. There is a way that we can relate to each other in that way. But we can also see in the people who we tend to gravitate toward in our relationships that the reason why we may be gravitated toward them in the first place is they mirror us in some way. There's some kind of resonance happening there. And so for this, it's almost like there would be, the, if you connect on the level at which you mirror one another, there's almost this deep connection that happens from that and you both can grow tremendously from it. And it's this almost soul deep connection. Actually, I got this. I got this uh, uh, term for one of my clients the other day, which I thought it was great. So there can be like this soul deep connection there, and from that, it's almost like the soil that your plant can grow from. And if you can connect on this level, it's so good for both parties because instead of growing separate, you grow together. And this is especially great to have in a long term relationship, but a friendship could function this way as well. So to get to this point, what you do is you have a lot of conversations with that person. You always communicate and you try to find those connection lines, those genuine connection points. Now this is not to be confused for projection. Sometimes we can feel like you know, oh, this person's like me, but only because we project that onto the other person. What you want to do is you want to look past those projections and see those areas where you do genuinely mirror each other. 
And this is ultimately why we do attract people who tend to mirror ourselves, you know, people who tend to have similar um, life experiences, maybe even similar traumas to ourselves, and there tends to be that mirror. Now sometimes this can be, um, that can end up in a very negative situation, like in the case of the codependent and the narcissist. So we want to avoid toxic connections like that. But if we can both meet each other with respect, if we can both respect, you know, and if we can respect each other's boundaries, at this point, we can use those connection points in our life, in our personality, and just in where we are at in life, it can just result in so much growth. Anyway, so that's all I have for you for now. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead, click the like button below and subscribe. Also, please write me a comment down below. I try to get to all my comments, um, and I really love hearing from you guys. Also, I want to say thank you so much to my patrons. You guys really keep me motivated, and I really, really appreciate it. Um, also, I wanted to talk a bit about the services that I'm offering. So I offer life coaching and dream work coaching and tarot reading through Skype. Um, for the life coaching and dream work coaching, I offer one hour Skype sessions and for the tarot reading, I offer 30 minute and one hour sessions. So with the life coaching and dream work coaching, a lot of that has to do with basically being able to reach certain goals that you have set. So for example, if you have, like are starting a new business or if you're there's some kind of like relationship that you want or there's trouble in relationships um, or you have um, difficulty finding clarity as to what you would like to do in life or what the next step is, like these can be really helpful because essentially in the session, I'd be helping you explore new perspectives with that and then also acting as a strategic and motivational partner for getting those um, getting those things underway like into the future um, and with dream work coaching it's very much similar to the life coaching but the difference is that we start in the dream and see what message the subconscious is trying to convey to you through the dream and using that as the starting point for the life coaching um, and with tarot sessions, a lot of that has to do with gaining clarity about certain situations that, you know, the client would bring. So essentially, you know, a lot of times people want to ask like, oh, what do I most need to hear right now? And essentially I use it somewhat in the coaching format as well, asking questions about, you know, what you might want to go um, in the direction of or are there any situations that you want to seek clarity about and that sort of thing. So if you're interested in any of those three services, please send me an email at thediamondnetchannel at gmail.com or you can also look at my website, thediamondnet.org, for more information. Anyway, so that's all I have for you for now. I hope that you enjoyed this video, and until next time, keep becoming more you. Mm -hmm.